Hi guys, welcome back to the Tactical Insight Show. I'm here with Graham. We're all smiles. Arsenal are North London Derby winners. North London is red. Nine points, three wins on the bounce, crawling up the table slowly towards where we want to be. But that, I mean, that was super. We're going to break it all down. Stats, analysis, shape. The second goal in particular, we want to talk about all that. Graham, do I bother asking how you are? I'm going to ask anyway. How are you? I'm, I'm great, mate. I still get the same buzz waking up the day after a North London derby win, as I did 51 years ago when I saw my first North London derby win and Arsenal beat Spurs at Highbury 2 0 with two Geordie Armstrong girls. Yeah. That's, it's special to beat Tottenham to remind them that North London is red. As Arsene Wenger said, there's still four miles and 11 league titles between us. So, um, yeah, it was a great day yesterday. Uh, I thought a real sliding doors moment for Mikel Arteta. Um, just like last season when he got the result against Chelsea 3-1 after a run of poor results, he got the big result against Tottenham after two OK performances against Burnley uh, and Norwich. What I loved about the performance yesterday, James, was the fact that he was able to recreate the freedom, attacking freedom, in a 4-2-3-1 shape that we'd seen the previous two weeks in the 4-3-3. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I think was the, the main thing I took out of yesterday. And we de deserved to win because uh, we had the precision up front to make the difference. We had the energy in, in midfield and the better movement to actually get the result. And I thought yesterday, Arteta got his tactics absolutely spot on and his team selection right yesterday. Yeah, brilliant. We're, we're going to give him all the credit in the world and a lot of the players. We're going to talk Granit Xhaka because I know we've had things to say in the past. So I think we're going to address that and talk about how good he was yesterday and how important he was more than anything. Um, we're, going to, we're going to touch on it all. So let's go into it. Let's start with the match stats. Obvious place to start. We've got them up here. Um, not too much to talk about, really, but I mean, the 12 shots to their 10 were seven on target. I think that's the main thing I take, how, how much more... We were clinical, obviously, especially in that first half, um, but just how much better we were. Seven, uh, tw seven of the 12 shots on target, that's a big increase. What was it against Norwich? Six on target out of 30? Yeah. You know, that, that, that's a big boost. Yeah, it was. I thought that we uh, were very creative yesterday. Uh, the way that we played around Tottenham's press was very good. Uh, Aubameyang ran the channels really well, looked back to his best, so it was an, uh, a really bright moment yesterday. But I thought the key really was around the team selection, the, going into that game. The key selection for me was will, would he bring back Granit Xhaka? Because uh, that was the big talk in the build-up. Uh, we've been playing the 4-3-3 shape and we'd had two wins in the 4-3-3 shape. Um, but he clearly demonstrated on Sunday that he relies heavily on Granit Xhaka and he wasn't quite yet ready to move to the post Jackie midfield yet, uh, and Jackie came back into the team, James. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I said that we've been critical in the past. Um, I'm not going to apologise for that because I think he's given us more than enough reason to be critical and sceptical and be ready to move on. Um, whether, I, whether I judge him harshly because of my frustrations with some of his mistakes and red cards, maybe. Maybe he's a better player than I give him credit for and I just can't look past the frustrating moments. And I'm happy to hold my hands up and say that. I had my doubts when I come into the 11, I didn't want to see it. But I also said that if he did, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he played brilliantly. And I think especially in that first hour, the first 45 minutes, I thought he was fantastic and key to what we did. We've got the shape up here on the screen. Um, talk us through the Arsenal shape and Grant Xhaka's role and, and, and what you enjoyed about, well, not just Xhaka, but everything we saw. Yeah, I thought that Xhaka came back into uh, like a 4-2-3-1 as a double pivot. Uh, I think why Arteta trusts him, and he does trust him, despite all those things he talked really about. Really trusts him. He really trusts him. What he likes about him, I think, is his ability to help him build up on the left-hand side. Uh, the way he's able to drop into that left-hand space with his left foot to progress the ball up on the left-hand side and also work with Tierney pushing up high. So I think that's primarily why he likes uh, Jacker on the uh, in the side. Uh, his passing stats were really good yesterday, James. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that's what he liked. Uh, so, th I mean, the, the shape was clear to see. That, um, I think at the start of the game, we pressed really high. I mean, we're a 4-2-3-1 uh, way we play in possession. We pressed in a 4-4-2 with Odegaard and Aubameyang pressing from the front. But I thought that we seized the initiative right from the start yesterday. The crowd were really up for it yesterday. They're fantastic, yeah. Absolutely, the way the players fed off the energy of the fans. And the fans were brilliant for 95 minutes yesterday. They drove the players on. And we literally pinned Tottenham back in that first 15 minutes. I mean, 
Uh, Tottenham like to build up centrally in a lot of their play. Uh, they made some very strange decisions uh, in the way they set up their midfield, which we're going to talk about, mm -hmm. uh, as which we exploited. But for all that, to stop them playing out through the centre of the pitch, we pushed them back, pushed their defenders back, and had them literally aiming long, aimless balls towards Harry Kane and Song. Mm. To they played with a front three yesterday, more on the right, Song on the left with Kane. Uh, and then they played with a midfield three with uh, Ali on the right and Endon Bailey on the left and Hoiberg more holding. But I thought that we played overloads around their midfield very easily, James. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think Xhaka was key to that. Um, and, and actually, big up a guy called Joe who watches the channel and he made a point to me in the build-up show. I mentioned, if we just look at the tactical pad for a second, I mentioned that I thought Tottenham would have this shield of Lucas, Kane and Son, basically like they did against Man City. A very tight, narrow three that were going to look to make it A, uncomfortable for us to play through, but also be there on the counter-attack yeah. when Spurs got the ball. And you're right, they went long a, a, long a lot, which surprised me. The other thing that surprised me, as you mentioned, is how wide Ali and in Dombele were at times. That, w that was strange because it did feel like there were openings in midfield. Now what Joe, the point Joe made after we talked about in the build ups that maybe Xhaka's in there to give us another avenue. And I said to him straight after, I said, you know what, that might absolutely well be true. We, we played so much through Partey in the Norwich game when he came on, and certainly against Burnley, everything was Partey, he's the feeder, and Odegaard and Smith roll pick up pockets, as we discussed last week. If I look at this graphic here, I think it tells a story. Now, this is not to discredit Thomas Partey. Thomas Partey was fantastic in the North London derby. I thought he was brilliant. But he was able to do a slightly different role, perhaps a more competitive role. What Xhaka was doing, if you look at the amount of passes, 20 more passes than his partner Partey, because we were feeding through him more. There was another avenue as he drifted out to the left. 85 pass, com uh, pass completion percentage, obviously 23 passes into the opposition half and 58 touches as well, more than Thomas Partey. And obviously Partey beats him for interceptions and a lot of the defensive stuff as well. So it was just interesting for me that Arteta, maybe that's why he wanted Jacker in the team, for that alternate avenue through the midfield so that you can then pick out the pockets. Yeah. And we saw that with the second goal. We did. I mean, first of all, on that uh, discussion what you're having about Partey's role, I thought Partey held the shape. His, his role in the Arsenal team is to hold the shape. Jacker is more the passer uh, and primarily to look to build up on the left-hand side where we like to build up a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, you're going to run on now to the... Yeah, well, let, no, I completely agree. Let's talk about um, Bakaya Saka, Smithrow and Odegaard. Um, yeah. You wanted to chat about them. They're separate discussions. Let's start, about, let's, let's start with Saka playing on the right. When you say Saka a lot, you, you, get, you get your tongue twisted. <laughs> let's start with Saka yeah. on the right. Yeah. Pepe gets dropped, Saka comes in. Yeah, big call that. Uh, and so the Jacker, uh, as I said to you before we went on air today, the big calls were in his team selection. Mm -hmm. Jacker coming back in into the pivot in midfield next to Partey, the build up on the left hand side with Jacker, and then Smith Rowe on the right. Uh, that's a big pardon, Saka on the right. Mm -hmm. um, now, dropping Pepe, I think, was a big call because Pepe has been looking, there's not a, we've said it before, there's not a lot of goals in our team and Pepe and Aubameyang are chief source of goals. Yeah. Pepe is the one who gets in the threatening positions a lot and, and has shots. Yeah. So to remove him I think was a big call but one thing about uh, Bukayo Saka, Saka is that he's very good on the right hand side mm -hmm. uh, and he offered something on that right hand side that Pepe can't offer. Mm -hmm. With Pepe, Pepe likes as we all know to come inside on his left foot a lot. Saka is very two footed, can go both ways. He can go outside and inside. And I think Arsenal look to exploit the weakness of Regalon driving on and trying to pull Dyer across the gap between Dyer and Regalon with Odegaard picking up great pockets of space, combining with Smith Rowe in great positions in build-up play, often look to release Saka on the right-hand side. And Saka's got that ability to go both ways, yeah. as we saw in, in, in the goals and in, in the goal we scored. But um, that was a key decision for me. Saka on the right, offering more in the way he can go either side than what Pepe can do. Yeah, I, could, I completely agree. I, I think Saka's two-footedness, his intelligence in those positions. Pepe always looks a threat, but I feel Saka's just that, a little bit more efficient from that side. Yeah. Um, so I agree with that. And Odegaard Smith, right? I mean, interesting that Smith, th they'd started as a midfield two, two number tens in, in well, advanced number eight in, in the previous game, um, in the, the Burnley Premier League game. Uh, but Smith is playing off the left and he comes inside naturally anyway. Yeah, I think the, another key part of the performance is so the way that Odegaard and Smith Rowe combine. Yeah. Uh, so everyone thinks that Smith Rowe can, is more the 10, but Odegaard was playing at the 10 and Odegaard was coming short 
playing mm -hmm. little one-twos with Smith Rowe, yeah. give and go. So I had one touch yesterday, pass and move play, looking to progress the forward, ball forward quickly was really incisive uh, and it cut Tottenham apart. What Smith Rowe does really well on the left is he offers two options. A bit like Saka can go both ways on the right hand side, Smith Rowe can either accelerate down the left, which we saw in the build up to the goal uh, that he created for Bamiang, but also he can come inside. Uh, to, uh, into that number 10 position mm -hmm. and when he does that Odegaard shifts across to the right so they dovetail very nicely Odegaard and Smith Rowe and I think this was a vision that Arteta had pretty much when he got all these players back and he did have mm. all these players back for this game this front four was Saka on the right look at Saka's numbers James on the right something like 15 goal contributions in mm. 23 games that shows yeah. his value on the right he's better on the right Smith Rowe can play on the left but can also can come inside and also Odegaard who is key to the whole thing again not only in his pressing uh, when Tottenham had the ball, but in the fact that he's literally all over the pitch, orchestrating the play, coming short, little one-twos. The way he built up for the first goal was, was key as well when he seized on Ben White's header when he beat Kane. So that is a very fluid front line. Yeah. Uh, and, and it got the best out of Aubameyang. Aubameyang now knew that he could spin in behind. The pass was always coming. So I thought we saw a different Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang yesterday. Yeah. As well. Yeah, I agree. We're definitely going to touch on a Bamiya. I thought yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a superb performance. Um, let's talk about the goals. We've, you know, <laughs> we, we, the, the shape and all that incredibly important. And I think how the two managers set up tactically played a massive part in, in, in dictating the way the game went. I don't believe Spurs players went into this game lacking hunger and fight and desire because if you can't get yourself up for a North London derby, what can you get yourself up for? I think it was the, the managers and the way they approached the game that made a massive difference. Let's talk about that first goal. Um, Emil Smith-Rowe, 12 minutes in. I mean, it's lovely. It's Odegaard picks. I mean, Ben White wins the first header. Yeah. And, and, and you were very quick when we were talking about it. You were very quick to mention that because... Yeah. And again, I want to chat about Ben White at the end because he, I thought he was a lot better today, yeah. uh, last, uh, yesterday even. Um, Odegaard through to Sacco and then it's the cut back to Smith. Right? It's yeah. just lovely. It's very yeah. visually pleasing. It was. And what I liked about it in that, in that game, Ben White was clearly tasked to go with Harry Kane. Mm -hmm. Harry Kane likes to drop short a lot of the time, so Ben White was following him. Mm -hmm. Harry White, uh, Ben White was getting in there, getting his, winning his duels. Yeah. And he won that header to set us on the way, on the front foot. Odegaard, the way he turns and just drives and then releases uh, the ball out wide to Saka and then we got Saka then one-on-one -on -one with Regalon mm -hmm. uh, and then he's able is he going to come inside is he going to go outside he goes outside and then Smith Rowe runs Dyer is drawn to the near post Smith Rowe runs across and it's a, a superb finish. The cutback the is cutback. something we've seen in the first goal and the second goal but yeah. it's something we've seen under Arteta a lot that that almost don't just put it aimlessly into the box look for who's coming back to the yeah. edge and we've, see, we, we've seen a lot of that since Arteta since day one really I mean yeah. I think one of the first goals we scored was that Pepe cut back against Man United yeah. so we, we've seen that a lot and it was a feature of their play yeah and just one other thing the way Smith Rowe he didn't try to hit it too hard he just come in and just placed it uh, yeah. and, and it was a, a really well worked move and a great goal to set us on the way and Good. we were well w worth that lead because we'd started on the front foot pushed them back their centre half's not great at, on the ball yeah. Sanchez uh, and Dyer, and we identified that we pushed them back and so they couldn't play out and that's why they were going long and we just kept recycling the ball and putting them back under pressure creating the overloads in midfield uh, with their unstructured shape, with the two number 10s in effect, I'll call them, Ali and Ndombele out wide. Hoiberg was obviously not coming inside, uh, sorry, moving forward more, and then you had obviously Kane coming back as he does, but there was a lot of spaces in that Tottenham midfield that mm -hmm. we exploited. Yeah, absolutely. OK, so let's talk about that second goal. It's superb football. We're going to look at it here. Um, it's the way it's kind of everything, we've, the best we've seen of Arteta, but all coming into one. You, you've got the passing out the back from Ramsdale. You've got that lovely kind of, we've been pressed, but we found a way through. The ball into the Aubameyang and the flick and then the cut back. I mean, talk us through, I mean, that's the goal of the day for me. Yeah, it's a, a throwback almost to some of the goals we used to score when Arteta first came into the club as manager, the one we, we played more on the counter-attack. But this was a counter-attacking goal, mind it you. It was, yeah, Tot it was. Tottenham would come back into the game, James, and were sort of like uh, getting a bit of pressure, uh, getting a head out of steam without creating anything. And then uh, Ramsdale, who I thought had another fine performance, he does sell Jacker slightly short when he plays out to him, as we can see the, when it's recreated here. Uh, but he's able to sort of like just get ahead. I don't think it was a foul on Hoiberg. Mm -hmm. uh, Tottenham were complaining it was a foul. 
and the, and then there's a lovely sort of a, he plays it uh, into Tierney. Yeah. And then the, he plays it into Smith Rowe. Um, who plays it into a Bamiyang? Well, it's it's um, Xhaka into Smith Rowe, who flicks into Tierney, and then Tierney into a Bamiyang. But it's a, it's a lovely flick beyond to Smith Rowe, and what it's it's so incisive, isn't it? It is incisive, uh, and uh, obviously Smith Rowe gets ahead of Tanganga, uh, and then he drives for that left hand side and gets the cross back, pull back, and a Bamiyang pulls off his man and finishes. Slightly scuffed his shot, but it, I don't think it was ever in doubt he was going in yeah, that left hand, left hand corner. I agree. Is is that? Sorry, the right, uh, the, the right hand corner. Yeah, I, I, is it? I mean, no, left hand corner. Get it right. <laughs> left hand corner. Left hand corner no, no, for the goalkeeper. Goal goal yeah. Right hand corner for us. There you go. When um, when I see that kind of goal, the thing I love about it, it's it's the bravery on the ball for Ramsdale to say, "I know you're being pressed, but I, I trust you," and Xhaka to deal with it in that situation, and then still to have the composure to pick out Smith Rowe, and then to, it, it's it does it show. Whether it comes off or not, does it show that every player is on the same wavelength with that kind of goal? Because you've got to be. It doesn't work if someone even has the slightest bit of doubt in that move. Absolutely. And I, I think that uh, you saw everybody, uh, the, 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 the passing and the movement, uh, mm. that's what Arsenal were all about. I think we saw it from every player in that, in, in that move. Uh, the, the, the purpose for was to, to, to drive the ball forward. Mm. And we've criticised Arsenal in the past for being slow in build-up and, and not being purposeful with their passing forward. Everything was about front foot, getting the ball forward uh, and give and go, one touch. And everybody sort of like uh, in this setup knew their role in that particular move. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk briefly on that third goal um, because, you know, our star boy Bakaya Saka has got it. Um, it's a lovely right foot to finish. We talked about his right foot for the assist um, and then, uh, you know, uses his great right foot for the goal as well. Harry Kane slips, then he runs back and Sly tackles him into position. I mean, there's so much to enjoy about it. Um, I'm going to give us some credit. We bigged up Bakaya Saka for not performing well against Norwich and Burnley, but still having the persistence to find a way to win us the game. He's got the persistence to ride Grant Handley and get the goal. He's got the persistence to drive it at goal, get fouled, Odegaard scores. And it's his persistence again coming through in that third goal. Yeah, and uh, I love the way Harry Gane played an assist in the, in the goal as <laughs> yeah. well. <laughs> um, yeah, it, again, it was it was a quick, incisive, almost uh, on the Arsenal uh, website, I think they called it liquid football. Yeah. Something like four passes, 15 seconds uh, uh, from one end of the pitch. Saka sort of like driving in. Mm. Kane, who's trying to get back to make amends for his error. Uh, unfortunately, him plays him through uh, as, as he's, uh, when he comes into challenge. But Saka stays with it, rides the challenge and puts it away with his right foot. Yeah, absolutely. So we're 3-0 up. Um, I thought everyone was fantastic, and everyone deserves a mention, but listen, we'll go on forever if we do. Ramsdale with the save at the end, I thought Gabriel was immense again. I want to touch on two players who have had criticism, not always unfairly, and we've talked about Xhaka, so it's not even Granit Xhaka. Um, I want to start with Ben White. I really liked his performance. Um, what I'm going to bring up these graf this graphic here, statistically, yeah, it's not particularly standout, but I felt he dominated his era and he took care of Harry Kane so, so expertly. What did you make of Ben White? Was this a, I don't want to say coming of age performance, you don't want to go too overboard, but was this a, ah, oh, I see why we brought him in. It's the interceptions, isn't it? It's how he gets ahead of his man. Yeah, and that's one thing we talked about, one of the strengths he had when I remember we talked about him before he came, and the fact that he can read the game, his interceptions. Uh, and he was good in the air. He, he won his duels against Kane. He did, uh, And yeah. he bossed Kane in this game. Uh, he did. I thought White and Gabriel in this game were excellent. White was sort of like commanding, assured, pinging the long balls in possession. Yeah, good in possession. Good I thought ball. both of them, Gabriel and White, were very good in possession. Uh, uh, and White won that header that set us on the way to the first goal. Gabriel very good at cutting out low crosses, mopping up. And also his passing forward was very good as well. I thought the partnership of Gabriel and White yesterday was excellent. And I think the key for Arteta, he's kept, you know, the, the defence looks in sync now, James. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's, he's sort of like got his defence, hasn't he? He's brought in Ramsdale in goal, who was excellent in the game and made an absolutely unbelievable save late on. Save of the season save, for me. Yeah, unbelievable save. Uh, Tommy Asu once again was unbelievable on the right-hand side, tucking in when he needed to be, driving forward, winning his headers. And White and Gabriel as a partnership worked really well, took care of Kane. Commanding performance by Ben White. This is exactly why we bought him, uh, and, and I think this this was a, a statement from Ben White that you know that I think he's uh, making that centre half position now 
everything that we hoped it would be. And, yeah. and I thought it was a really good performance from Ben White. No, absolutely. I thought he was really good. And let's touch on the man himself, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Got the second goal, led the line superbly, break down his goals for us here. You sent me these stats, and I've got to say, they're, they're very pleasant reading. He's got a fa fabulous record at the Emirates, James. And that yeah. was his 50th goal in 76 matches at the Emirates. Uh, the breakdown there, he's got 30 with his right foot, 8 with his left foot. Four headers, seven penalties, and I think one direct free kick. One direct that's, free that's kick his, as well. That's his 50 goals. But what I liked about him yesterday was he was running the channels. He was moving their defence around, uh, and and he's looking hungry again. Yes. This is the Pierre Aubameyang, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang of two years ago. Yeah. I think he feeds off the energy of the crowd. Uh, and yeah. And I think you saw it in his performance yesterday. He run Tottenham ragged. Uh, and I think he knows that he's now going to get chances again in this system with uh, Saka on the right, Smith on the left and, and Odegaard at number 10. And I think this was a really good performance by him. Uh, and, and also, he worked his socks off. That's what you really like did. about him. Not only was he dangerous in attack, but off the ball, him and Odegaard pressed relentlessly. And, and I haven't seen that from him lately. He's almost looked uh, over the last lethargic, year. Lethargic. Yeah, a little, little bit, bit lethargic, but this was him back to his very best in his all-round game. And I think that the game was dead at half-time because of that 3-0. Mm. Tottenham did make adjustments in the second half, James. Uh, yeah. I think they brought on Skip and give him a bit more control in central midfield because I thought in the first half, Ndombele and Ali not only didn't work off the ball, they were out wide a lot and not as tucking in to, to help them out of possession, which I couldn't understand that because we were just playing around them so easily. Skip gave him more control in the second half. They gave him a foothold in the game. Um, and maybe they should have had a penalty. Ben White, we talked about how good he was. Do you was. think that was a penalty? I, I think it probably was. I, think I was in the Gabriel one, though. Might, you know, that yeah, was a bit yeah. of a push. So, so uh, I thought that... Um, and they got a late consolation with Song uh, when uh, uh, Gill, uh, who came yeah. on a bit... He looked quite lively, actually, he when he came lively, on. Yeah, he did, and he yeah. didn't give that up, and he managed to thread the ball through on, on, on their uh, left-hand side and, and the pullback for Song. So they got a goal back, and they put us under a little bit of pressure, and then Ramsdale can't talk enough about how good that save was. Yeah, absolutely. You, when you see it in slow motion, the way he adjusts his feet and gets up there and puts it onto the bar. Um, if it had been 3-2, I think that would have given a slightly disjointed look to what the game was about, James. Because I thought agree. that we were a, a long way ahead of Tottenham in that game. Uh, and uh, although they came the last 10 minutes, we were sort of like playing for the 3-0, really. I completely and utterly agree. I, I think 3-2 wouldn't have done justice. Just one thing I'll say on Aubameyang. What I loved about so much, so much about his performance yesterday it looked like a complete performance, like a, a number, a typical number nine. He was winning his headers, his hold up, his flick to Smith Rowe, his finish, the runs. It was just so much to it. And Aubameyang, I think Aubameyang's six two, if I'm not mistaken. And I've always thought you're tall, but I don't feel like you give defenders trouble in the air the way you should. Um, and yesterday he did. He abs and, and Sanchez and Dyer, uh, Dyer, no mugs in the air. Um, so I actually thought he did brilliantly to impose himself and lead the line the way he did. And his work rate was superb. And yeah, congrats on the 50 Emirates goals, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. Because you know we've. This is why I think, and I know there's a long way to go. This is why I think when we say credit in the bank's important, he had a bad year last season, and there were reasons for it, and there were also reasons that were his fault let's say not his fault but maybe he wasn't trying as hard or maybe there was something not quite not quite there with him um but we always said there's credit in the bank we've seen him be a world-class striker for us so let's just see if he can get it back and in the last three games i think he's been getting better and better and better and and maybe it all came together for him yesterday and we'll see the best of him now oh, Who I, knows? Hope, I hope so because uh, i think he looks back to his best. I hope that so, was the yeah. Aubameyang of two years ago, James. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I, you know, he, he's one of these players, you can see, he feeds off the energy of the crowd. He does, And yeah. you've got to remember, as much as we weren't playing a system that suited him last year, he didn't have the crowd in the stadium. I want to give a lot of credit to Cecil. Cecil said something in the middle of last season. He said, you know, do you think not having a crowd affects him because he's a bit of a showman. You see yeah. the way yeah. he carries himself, plays the game, the flips when he said, you know, even the Henri celebration, you know, he loves to entertain. So yeah, absolutely, maybe having no crowd was a, was a like impeded on his game a little bit maybe. Who knows, but you're absolutely right to bring it up. Um, let's end on a question. We always end on a question. We want to ask you guys, let us know in the comments as well. We were last week saying that 4-3-3 might be the way. Mm. We've now seen us perform brilliantly in a 4-2-3-1 and look our most fluid. 
is that just a good sign? Is it good to be flexible in formations and systems and have different ways of playing? Or does Arteta need to find one and stick with it? Because at times I worried that Arteta didn't know his best 11 or didn't know what he wanted to do. Uh, I, I don't know how to quite take that. If there's one negative, it's supposed that I, I'm not sure that we still know quite what our best system is going forward. But maybe that's a good thing that we're flexible. Well, uh, you know, I, I saw signs yesterday were just as creative in the 4 2 3 1 as the 4 3 3. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I think I had a vision this season that when he had all these players, that this was going to be the front four Saka on the right, Smith on the left, Odegaard at 10s, and Aubameyang down the middle. Um, but clearly, the 4 3 3, which we talked about over the last two weeks, was really working with the way he was building up with Odegaard. Almost like at the times it was like a 2 2 6, yeah. you know, with Odegaard supporting a front five. So um, I, I think there is room for both formations. I think he's now got to deal with the fact that Jacker is injured, so it looks like he's going to be out for a while actually. So does he then yeah, move, he move the conga in the Jacker's role uh, and keep the two, or does he move back to the three? That would be a decision for him to make. But I, I think the key to this is the fluidity for me would be there in a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3. I think the key really is the back five. If you're going to maintain, to get that, to build a platform, you have to have the same defenders um, we've talked about this before, and I think he's been guilty of the past of moving centre halves around yep. and, and changing the back five too much or the back four. I think now he's settled on his defence, and that to me is the key. I think we can rotate four three three, four two three one, as long as we got the platform of the same players at the back, and hopefully they all stay injury free. White and Gabriel looks a really good partnership, and it's growing. Tommy Asu is coming on that right hand side, and I don't think anyone imagined that he would be as good as he is and uh, he, the fans he absolutely love him don't and they? And he was and fantastic yesterday. He was yesterday. fantastic yesterday and of course you've still got Kieran, Kieran Tierney on the left hand side providing what he does. Yeah. So uh, the key to me is the, the, the base, the base of the back five that enables you to play over a 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1. To me Odegaard knits everything up together so well whether he plays in a three or he plays, he can come deep and even play in a two. Yeah. So I think Odegaard is really looking like absolute steel now at 30 million. Mm. So I think that um, it doesn't bother me if we play. I mean, watch what I watched yesterday. I think we're just as creative in a 4-2-3-1 as we are in a 4-3-3. Three, three. Mm. I think he can play either shape, and it gives him options going forward, James. Absolutely. Well, look, long may it continue. I, I think we're right to be super, super positive about this performance. A lot of people saying, was this the day that the project went bang, as Arteta prophesied? This, 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 this was a statement, a real... Uh, as I said earlier, sliding doors moment, a signature win for Arteta. This is what he needed. And I think uh, the crowd yesterday for 95 minutes were absolutely unbelievable, they, the, the way they drove the players mm. on. And, and, you know, we started fast yesterday. And, and sometimes we've been guilty of not fa starting fast. I completely agree. Uh, and, it's, you know, it's a shame we can't play Tottenham every single week, isn't it? It seems to bring the best out of the players. I love the crowd yesterday, James. You've got to say it. Absolute shit. How's we yesterday? Yeah. Chanting to the Tottenham uh, players, are you, t are you Tottenham in disguise? Are you Tottenham in disguise? <laughs> they were fantastic, it, it, it was fantastic yeah. yesterday. Uh, I love that. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I just think that um, the energy in the team yesterday was great to see. It was, it was a great performance. Uh, and, and I just hope then moving forward now we can build on this and go and get the, put in a good performance to get the result of Brighton next we week. Ha we have to, but that's the key. We have to build on it because I'll say one thing, and don't please don't call me negative and all that, but the one <laughs> thing I'll say is. I expect the players to get up for it and be like that for a North London derby. Go do it at Brighton now. Yeah. I know it's different, but go that level of performance and intensity. We don't have the midweek. We don't have European football. We've got a nice international break. We don't have that many internationals in the no. squad. <laughs> go and do that again. Do it again that's, and do it again. That's, that's the blueprint now. That's the blueprint and the way we want to play. And the problem yeah. is that our 38 games in a league season, I reckon we see that normally around... Mm. Six or seven times. Yeah, I think, I we think need to see it 25 yeah, to 30. We do, but different teams create different problems. Mm -hmm. And I think also you have to look at the opposition. Yeah. I think we were massively helped by the way Tottenham played yesterday. I yeah. will say that. But for all that, we still were excellent yesterday. And, and I want to see us playing like that. And obviously you have to respect your opponent. You have to of look course. at who you're playing. And we will tweak it for certain teams. Uh, but I, I, you know, I see a team already developing. Under He's got his signings in now. Uh, he's got the three of his of his defence there uh, that he's bought, and he's got his midfielder Odegaard now to create. Uh, and there was Saka and Smith Rowe, the Hell End boys, uh, you know, immense yesterday. 
you know, he's now, I think, got a team there that I think he can work with. There you go. Guys, as always, thanks so much for tuning into the Tactical Insight Show. I think we've we've covered everything. I mean, Just listen. Just one thing, James. Yeah, go on. I don't give shout outs to people on the show. Oh, okay. But, but Luke Harold okay. is a massive fan of the Arsenal Tactical Insight Show, follows AFTV. I said to Luke that Tay, I would say, uh, give him a shout out on the show because I know he watches it every week. So, Luke. Thank you very much, Luke. And thank you to all of you who, who come and watch. We really appreciate it. Listen, Gabriel was immense. Tierney was immense. Partey was immense. Odegaard was immense. <laughs> and we've not even touched on all of those players. So just a massive well done to Arsenal, a massive well done to Arteta. It clearly meant a lot to all of them and all the fans who were superb at the stadium as well. It's been great chatting about it. It's been great breaking it down. Let us know in the comment section if there's anything you want us to chat about next week. You know, what you thought of the game. You know, you're always answering comments. Graham's always in there to chat with you guys as well. So don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, if you haven't yet. And check out the Bars Premier League show, which is coming out a little later today as well. If it's not out already, depends when you're watching. Thank you, Graham. Thank, Thank you, you guys. We'll see you next week.